The AMG-1 is an F1 car in disguise. It was built from the ground up for breaking records, and in September 2024, that's exactly what it did. Again. Today, I'm going to tell you about the insane tech in the AMG-1, and it all starts 10 years ago. If you're unfamiliar with F1, it's important to know that there are very strict rules about what engines the cars can use. And in 2014, they'd been changed from using V8 engines to hybrid 1.6 liter turbocharged V6s. These new rules also allowed for two energy recovery systems that would charge the hybrid battery when the car is braking. Mercedes-Benz had developed an 870 horsepower engine for this rule set and put it into their new car, the W06 Hybrid. They quickly proved their dominance on the track. In 2015, the car won 16 out of 19 Grand Prix in the season while driven by Lewis Hamilton and Nico Rosberg, as well as clinching 13 fastest laps and 12 1-2 finishes. And it's because of this success that somewhere in the faraway land of Germany, some Mercedes executive snorted a line of coke off a stripper's ass and had a revelation. Let's put this shit in a road car. Fast forward to June 2022 and the AMG1 is officially announced with the first unit being delivered in January the next year. Mercedes-Benz had taken the new hybrid engine technology from the F1 car and put it into a street legal chassis that would eventually sell to your local rich douchebag for $2.75 million. And if you're Lewis Hamilton, you might as well buy two, because fuck it, why not? The powertrain had to be modified in order to be street legal. Starting with the fact that the F1 car idled at around 5,000 RPMs uh, and redlined at 15,000. This had to be lowered to a, a mere 11,000 RPM redline uh, in order to get the idle RPM to be a little more conventional 1,000 RPM. Uh, due to this and some other alterations, the turbocharged 1.6 liter V6 would produce 566 horsepower, most of that going to the rear wheels. The engine was assisted by four electric motors that would increase the total output of the car to 1,049 horsepower. These were powered by a 220 pound hybrid battery in the center of the car, which is four times larger than the one in the F1 car and has a maximum power output of 400 kilowatts. I had some trouble finding the maximum power output of other cars, uh, but from what I can tell, a Tesla Model S long range can generate 350 kilowatts maximum. And that's a fully electric vehicle, so 400 kilowatts is pretty impressive from a hybrid. Also, just sidetracked to put that in perspective, the Tesla Plaid uh, maximum power output is like 1,000 kilowatts, so yeah. However, the hybrid battery in the AMG-1 isn't meant to last very long. At full output, it'll run dry in only a few seconds. Do batteries run dry? Or do they just like run dead? Luckily, due to the magic of electricity, if you turn an electric motor upside down, it turns into a generator. I think. I dropped out of college, I'm not entirely sure. The point is that when the driver brakes, all four motors will turn the kinetic energy from the moving car into power that can be used to recharge the hybrid battery. Speaking of electric motors, these were also adapted from the F1 car. Two of them even have fancy names. The MGUK and the MGUH. MGUK stands for Motor Generator Unit Kinetic, and is attached directly to the crankshaft in the engine. The motor can produce an additional 161 horsepower and assist the engine when the car is accelerating. The other one, the Motor Generator Unit Heat, is a little more interesting because it connects to the turbocharger. I might make a video about turbos at some point, uh, but all you need to know right now is that a turbocharger has two sides, the compressor and the turbine. As exhaust gases flow out of the engine, they spin the turbine at a very high speed. The turbine then spins the compressor, which pushes air into the engine. This means that with the addition of adding more fuel to the mixture, the engine can make more power. Turbine. 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 I am saying turbine correctly. I just had to make sure that it felt wrong when it came out of my mouth. The problem with turbos is that power boost is not always instant because the turbine takes time to spool up when the accelerator is pressed. The MGU-H solves this by keeping the turbine spinning at high speeds, which completely eliminates the dreaded turbo lag. 
Uh, yeah, pretty fucking smart, to be honest with you. Those guys over at Mercedes really using their brains on this one. The final two electric motors are each attached to one of the front wheels and both produce an extra 161 horsepower. And the powertrain wasn't the only F1 technology incorporated into the AMG1. It also uses a drag reduction system, or DRS, that was inspired by the W06 hybrid. There are two main components of active aero on the AMG1, the flaps above the front wheel houses and the two-part rear wing. And in the video of the lap record, you can see the front flaps opening and closing the entire time. It's really fucking cool. When DRS is active, the front flaps close and the rear wing can be lowered either partially or completely in order to reduce drag and increase the acceleration of the car. This does significantly reduce downforce, but if you're going in a straight line, that doesn't really matter. When the car is about to turn, the driver can deactivate the DRS, which raises all the flaps in order to keep the car planted on the road. By switching DRS on and off throughout the lap, the driver can get the best of both worlds and significantly decrease lap times. Plus it just looks sick as hell, which is basically the only thing that matters anyway. And I gotta say, the AMG1 is probably one of my favorite looking cars that's come out in the last few years. You got the massive wing, you got the roof mounted intake, which is always a killer thing for me. The fucking shark fin, and you got the big single exhaust pipe in the back, kind of like the, the Senna had, except it's just one. I think the Senna had three. Uh, yeah, this car, I think it just looks fucking sick. It's dope. And this brings me to the final point today, which is that it was only a matter of time before the AMG1 broke its previous lap record on the Nürburgring and got the first sub 6 minute 30 second time of any production car with a time of 6 minutes, 29 seconds, 0 .09. That's beating its last record by 6 seconds. Uh, and yeah, it's not surprising. It is a fucking F1 car. The next fastest time is the 911 GT2 RS, with a time of 6 minutes, 38.835 seconds. Which, you know, don't get me wrong, that's fast as fuck. But on a racetrack, a 10 second difference is a long ass time. Throughout the entire lap, you can see... Oh god. Maro... Engel? I feel really bad, because this dude's a legend. I mean, clearly, just by watching the video, you can tell he knows what he's doing, and I'm probably just butchering his name. So I'm gonna skip past it. He's constantly using the DRS in order to get every extra mile per hour that he can out of the car. And to be honest, the main reason he didn't get sub 630 on his last attempt in 2022 was because the track was wet. But that didn't stop him from getting the lap record anyway with a time of like 6 minutes 35 seconds, which was still the fastest time. And if you watch the two laps side by side, you can really see how over the course of the lap, he is consistently faster in the corners and several other sections of the track than he was in 2022. In this section specifically, he's going around 50 kilometers an hour faster than he was two years ago, and you can really tell the difference by watching. There's a couple other sections I noted here as well where he is going at least 10 kilometers an hour faster than he was in 2022. Uh, and there's probably a bunch that I missed. Basically the entire lap, he's just consistently cutting off time. Another interesting thing to notice is that on the final straight, the car begins to slow after a certain point. I'm fairly certain that this is due to the hybrid battery running out of charge and the electric motors no longer providing any additional horsepower. However, as soon as he begins to brake and goes into the next turns, the motors are going to start to recharge the battery again, and then they'll be able to be used in the next straight. The lap is really impressive. I highly recommend you watch it if you haven't already. It'll be linked in the description. Uh, and once again, I apologize to Mr. Angel Angel for completely butchering his name. Uh, much respect, man's a legend. Also, I know I kind of just started making these videos again, and I do plan to continue it, but I will be heading off to boot camp next week, so you guys aren't going to get any videos for like two or three months, um, which I know is it's going to be heartbreaking, but you can, you can do this. You just have to survive for three months, and then there will be more stupid videos that no one watches.